How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I want to go over a quick setting problem that I found on the last video that I had just released here. Going through the Denon ABR settings, I maybe found a problem with Odyssey that I didn't realize until I did the video. So I think there's a problem with Odyssey in the fact that I made a change after my initial Odyssey ran and I had all my settings dialed in, I made a change and then when I go into my settings now, the Odyssey menu is grayed out. I can't select it. I can't do anything with it. And it says that I must rerun Odyssey before I'll be able to access that menu. So I didn't even realize that had happened. I don't know how long it's been like that. I think I figured it out and I'll walk you through how I potentially traced down the problem to one specific change that I had made. To start off, here's the screen behind me again. We got the shield powered up, the projectors on of course. If we go to our menu here, I'm just going to the setup menu in the Denon. So here's your initial screen. And under audio, here you can see that Odyssey is grayed out. And in the blue letters at the bottom, the description of it is that it adjusts the Odyssey parameters. But then under that it says you must perform Odyssey setup before using this feature. And I cannot select it at all. Can't do anything with it. So inside of that menu you have all the options that are specific to Odyssey and as you can see I can't access them right now or change anything at all. So I think I figured out what happened. I was using the Odyssey app the multi-EQ app on my phone. I think it's $20. You can buy it from the Play Store for Android, or I believe it's on the Apple Store as well. And when I initially ran my Odyssey setup, that's what I used because I wanted to save that file in the app and then go through and not have it make any subwoofer changes at all. Because as you know, I've gone through and done all my subwoofer stuff externally and I didn't want Odyssey touching any of that. So for me it was worth paying the $20 to be able to go in and turn off any of the subwoofer changes that the Odyssey correction makes and then upload that file. What I believe the problem is, I'm going to exit this menu and go back to speakers and under manual setup we're going to go to speaker config. The only thing that I have found that's different from when I initially ran that Odyssey setup on the app on my phone and then uploaded it. As I'm trying to figure this out, under subwoofer, it has it selected to one speaker if I upload the file from my phone, and that's where it was saved last. So I was only using the one subwoofer output because I didn't have my bass shaker setup installed yet. There was no subwoofer 2 output being used from the Denon ABR. So anytime that I go in here and change this to two speakers instead of one, what happens is I go back here and then my Odyssey menu is grayed out. And that's the only change that I make. And my Odyssey menu comes back and then here's your, your different settings that you can now access. As soon as I go back to speakers, manual, speaker config, and I want to change that because I'm using my subwoofer out 2 to go to the Onkyo external receiver which powers the bass shakers in my chairs. So I need that to two speakers and it automatically set this to large when, when I change the, the subwoofers. This is what I need it to be, but then I no longer have access to my Odyssey menu. That's how I kind of traced it down to where the problem is. I also don't know if this menu being grayed out means that Odyssey is completely disabled. I don't know if any of the previous room corrections that it measured are even applied or if it's just completely disabled. That's what I'm assuming is happening. So what I'm gonna do now that I'm using both subwoofer outputs, I'm gonna go back and rerun Odyssey using two subwoofer outputs and hopefully it'll work and I'll still have access to my Odyssey menu using two subwoofer outputs and then everything will hopefully work in the end like it's supposed to. So let's check this out and see if I'm correct. It works like I'm hoping it will. 
In the speakers menu, click on Odyssey Setup. Then at the bottom of that menu, click on the Start button to begin. It will walk you through the initial setup for Odyssey by setting up the included cardboard tripod for the Odyssey microphone. I don't use the cardboard stand. I place the mic on the headrest of my main listening position where my ears are the closest. Once you plug in the setup mic, you're ready to continue the setup. Continue to follow the on-screen directions to get the Odyssey setup started. Be prepared to be completely out of the room if possible, so you are not blocking any of the sounds as they bounce around the room during the measurement process. You want the room to be as quiet as possible as well with no external noise interferences. This is how you start your Odyssey setup using the settings menu in the AVR. Now we're going to do the same process using the Odyssey Multi-EQ Editor app. You will see the same initial setup process, but the difference is in the results and the ability to edit the file at the end before you upload it into the receiver. Follow the on-screen directions in the app as directed to start this process. Once the process starts, you will hear a series of beeps throughout all of your speakers in your system. This is how it measures distances, sets crossover points, applies room corrections, and everything else that Odyssey does. Again, make sure you are out of the room and the room is completely quiet during this process. Here is what it looks like when it goes through the measurement process. I sped it up to get through it faster. Start at measurement position 1 and let it run completely through, then repeat for position 2 and 3 and so on unless you stop at 3 like I do. Here's where you move the mic to position 2 and repeat the process. Okay, we just completed our Odyssey setup and I didn't load the previous file that I had on the app on my phone because I realized there were some other changes that I had made throughout and I wanted to keep all those settings the way they were. I just wanted to have two subwoofers in the menu and then run Odyssey. I simply went into Odyssey app on my phone and started the process of going through the Odyssey setup. Once we got in there, I just use the first three mic positions and then I stop the setup at that point. There's an option that'll give you, that'll say use three mic positions and that's where I typically stop because I don't really have the, the space to take those rear measurements that Odyssey incorporates and I don't need any room corrections way out front. No one's sitting out front. So I just do the first three. They're all taken at my main listening position, so they're within the two feet of each other, and then I stop. Here's the results. Again, when we go into our setup menu. So my, my subwoofer didn't change. I actually kind of skipped the whole subwoofer, and I knew that I had it at negative 5.5 for all six of the main subwoofers. So I just, it was at negative 12 because it was trying to cut them because the volume was way too high. So I skipped that and just set it back to the 5.5 before I started recording this video again. But as you can see, I now have my Odyssey menu, which was the goal the whole time. So we can go in here and we can make any of these changes now. If I want to try dynamic EQ, I can turn that on or off. I can go back into my preset two under my speaker menu and have it so that dynamic volume is on. So if I'm nighttime watching, like I mentioned in the settings video, it will keep everything at a constant volume and there won't be highs and lows. So it's a lot easier to, to watch after hours if kids are in bed or sleeping. So I have access to all that stuff now. And then the big thing to do is just go back in here, go to your manual setup. And I just want to confirm everything was still the same. So now I have two speaker options, so my bass shakers are still working. And it was kind of cool when Odyssey was running its setup, I actually heard the bass shakers pulsing from the Odyssey uh, setup when it goes through and makes all those sounds. It automatically reset all the distances, and I took a screenshot of the before and after and compared, and it was pretty much all the same. 
and then your levels. Again, they were there might have been a, a half a decibel here and there, but they were pretty much all the same from my previous uh, run of Odyssey setup as well. I did have to go in and change the crossovers. I did that in the multi-EQ editor app before I uploaded the file to the receiver. And again, I just took a screenshot of where they were, made the changes in the editor app in the file before it gets uploaded so that once it uploads it, it's all right here exactly where I need it to be and I don't have to make any changes now. Bass is good. And that's pretty much it. Mission accomplished. I feel better knowing that I have access to the Odyssey menu now and if anyone knows, if that's grayed out, if Odyssey is canceled and no room corrections are applied, I'd like to know. I'll have to try and do some research and see what I can figure out as well. I personally feel like it's working and this is the way it should be. I'll have to try some demos out and see if I can tell a difference. That's all for this video. I just wanted to show how I found that and how I diagnosed it and figured out that it was those post settings made after Odyssey was ran that changed that and graded out as an option. If you do any changes to your system or you're expanding, making changes, come back and check this and see if you need to rerun Odyssey in your system to get it to work like it's supposed to and take those new measurements with the new settings that you made in the menus to get it to function properly. So thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next one.